and you are looking live over the starting area for this year's remodeled Gate River Run. COVID-19 restrictions are in place, but that hasn't stopped some of the country's best long distance runners from lining up for the 15K National Championship. And the local station has all the action from start to finish. Channel 4, the local station, is proud to present a national championship. This is special coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run, presented by H2 Health. And this is a live look at the sports complex in downtown Jacksonville, where the 15K National Championship will get underway in the next less than 30 minutes, showing that life can go on in these uncertain times. All runners are supposed to be in place right now. This is a reduced field from past years because of the pandemic. But that's not stopping the excitement and enthusiasm Jacksonville has for one of its premier sporting and community events. And it's going to require a lot of enthusiasm for the runners to make it up the green monster. Here's a shot from San Marco. You'll see them take a move there. And then that will be on the minds of just about everybody going up that heart bridge. And then down the Hart Bridge, it's about a two mile trek to the finish line. And our team is covering it all for you this morning from the effects of COVID-19 to the race to some truly inspiring stories of not letting the virus break the human spirit. Good morning and welcome to Channel 4 special live coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run. I'm Cole Pepper alongside one of the best runners to ever come out of our state, Keith Brantley, the former U.S. Olympian. Uh, Keith, usually we're out here uh, on the race course, but due to the limited room at the finish line and the social distancing rules in place. We're in studio this year. Uh, this event was one of the last mass gatherings in Jacksonville before the world changed. And here we are one year later with the city holding this great event in a safe and responsible way. It's something that a lot of runners have been looking forward to. Well, you know, it's uh, definitely unprecedented times, Cole, and, and uh, it's been really difficult for the runners because, uh, you know, runners like to compete. They like to show off their skills, and, uh, you know, with no races in 2020 or very few, uh, this is going to be a big event for us. No doubt, and for some of the elite runners, of course, they'll be also looking forward to the Olympic trials. We'll talk about that as the race plays out. Let's catch you up with the changes for this year's event. We'll focus on the race itself before Jennifer Reddy explains the safety measures being taken again this year. The big logistical change is the start. Here's a live look at the two starting lines on your left is the new starting line for this year. The corner of a Philip Randolph and East Adams Street right near Intuition Aleworks on the right. Last year's starting line at APR and East Duval Street, which went into effect because of the Hart Bridge construction. These two starts are necessary. They're providing additional social distancing measures. Try to keep all the runners as safe as possible. Now let's look at how these two different routes will lay out. Keith, uh, let's start with last year's start. All the elite runners on the East Duval Street making a straight shot for James Weldon Johnson Park before making that left turn at City Hall, heading south on Laura Street for a block, and then turning left again on East Monroe before turning right on the Main Street and heading toward the St. John's River. Runners leaving from the new start at APR and East Adams will only have to go a block before they make that right to head west on Bay Street before almost running a circle before merging with uh, the other route at For uh, Forsyth in Maine. Uh, these two starts, uh, again, all the elites are going off of one, so it won't impact the, that portion of the race. But for a lot of other runners, uh, they're going to be coming together. How is this going to impact how they run the Gate River Run? Well, I think with the reduced numbers, it's going to be certainly a lot less traffic than it has been in years past. I think the, the big spoiler today is, you know, what's, how, how are people going to set themselves, themselves up for the wind? The, this is going to be a very windy race in the last half, and I think people are going to get a sense once they get on that Main Street Bridge exactly what it's going to feel like. Yeah, there's no doubt that the weather is going to have a big part to play in who wins and how they play and how they run today. After that, it's business as usual uh, on the course. Runners will be on the same course for the remainder of the race, trekking nearly eight and a half miles through San Marco and St. Nicholas before making that infamous climb up the Hart Bridge and then the sprint to the finish down by TIAA Bank Field. As usual, runners have been seated with the faster runners going first. You can see the elite women are off at 7.54. The fast men then start at 8, and everyone else follows every five minutes after that, you can see blue and green going off at 8 o'clock from two, uh, blue, and, blue and red, rather, from two, the two separate start areas. That's going to break up, and as you mentioned, Keith, for social distancing purposes in a smaller field, that's certainly going to be a big part of what we see today. Uh, 
What's more important this year, Keith, the first mile or the last? Well, it depends on if you're running for prize money or if you're running just to run a personal best. Uh, I think the most important thing today for the elite runners is that you're going to see them watching each other because I think by the time they get to four or five miles, they'll get a sense of how much wind there is, and I think it's going to be a very tactical race. And we'll talk about the tactics that will be utilized here as we continue on. When we come back, we'll check in with the rest of our running race coverage team, how race organizers are taking every safety precaution to keep runners safe. And we'll take you to the top of the Green Monster to see what the conditions are like for the competitors when our special coverage of the Gate River Run returns, presented by H2 Health. Welcome back to Channel 4's special race day coverage of the 44th annual Gate River Run. I'm Cole Pepper alongside former Olympic runner Keith Brantley. And uh, we are now less than 15 minutes from the start of the race. Keith, what are these uh, runners experiencing right now? What are they thinking about? And uh, what are they trying to focus on as the start of the race approaches? Well, I think the most important thing is they're trying to stay warm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the wind chill the way it probably is this morning uh, and uh, the warm-up probably being controlled uh, having to get into their uh, into their areas you want to stay warm and I think that's the most important thing right now is just don't worry so much about the race get compartmentalize things make sure that you're warm and you're ready to run then once the race starts you can focus cold weather on the course great cold weather at the start line maybe a little uncomfortable uh, for some for sure Let's check in with the Jennifer Reddy, who is down at our uh, one of the two starting lines, East Duval Street, this morning. Uh, Jen, walk us through the changes this year. How's the vibe down there this morning? Good morning. Well, the vibe is energetic and a lot of excitement, so that certainly isn't any different than any years past, but there are a lot of changes that we've been talking about over the course of the last few months, Sorry. really, to get people prepared. One of those, as you guys mentioned, is the two start lines. This is one start line here at Duval Street, and then if you head this way with me, that second start line is down at Adams Street. You can see a lot of people that are out and about this morning. They are wearing their masks. That is one of the other major changes is you do need to be wearing your mask at the start and the finish line, but you can take it off while you are running. There will also be water stations along the course this morning, but there won't be as many as there have been in years past. So that is a little bit of a change for some people. And if you're out here, you do notice there's not as many runners as we've seen in years past because it is reduced for the 15K this year to about 8,000 runners. But you can see still a lot of excitement of people out here this morning. They're ready to run. They've been here for about two hours this morning. They have their masks on. They're warming up. And they are ready Yay, for on. this race to kick off in less than an hour. One of the things once you're done the race is you will have to put your mask back on right away when you finish before you're able to get the medal. Again, that is to make sure that there is that social distancing. People are being safe. But those are just some of the changes. But other than that, Cole, I've got to tell you, it does feel like a normal Gate River run. There's a lot of energy. The music is playing. People are excited. They're all smiles this morning and really just eager to get back out there on the course. Jen, thanks a lot. You know, there are so many runners, uh, just local recreational runners, who point their training and their uh, expectations to this day each and every year. And for a lot of them, Keith, they didn't know whether this day was going to come. You know, we, we've all been adjusting as the pandemic has played out. But you can feel the energy there, not just the music. You can just feel the energy from the people down around the uh, sports complex getting ready to start this race. A absolutely. And it's funny, I, I coach a few people in town that are running the race. And they, um, you know, it, they were so nervous back in December whether or not the race was going to go off. I said, you can't control that. Focus in on trying to train for this particular date. And if it goes off, great. It, you know, if it doesn't, then we'll figure out something. I know an awful lot of runners who put a lot of miles in in the last year because there wasn't much else to do in some regards. Get out there and run. Uh, stay socially distanced and put in the miles so we'll see if we get some good times from some of the local runners as well. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at some of the top runners who might come away with the championship, the national championship of the 15K for the men and the women. We'll take a look at top contenders as our coverage of the Gate River Run continues right after this. Welcome back to Channel 4's special live coverage 
of the 44th Gate River Run. I'm Cole Pepper here along with former Olympian Keith Brantley. Let's take a look at the runners who will be contending for today's national title. And let's start on the men's side, Keith, and talk about some of the guys we think may make a difference. The defending champion is Frank Lara. Interesting in terms of how he wound up earning that spot. Last year he was the second to cross, but Ridoan Harufi then was uh, busted for performance enhancing, so he's out. By the way, he got busted twice last yes. year, so bad yeah, year for right him. Right before River Run. <laughs> yeah, uh, Frank Lara now is uh, the uh, defending champion as a result. And Shadrick Kipkircher on this list, also a guy who has won this race in 2019. Who do you like this year? Well, I, I like Frank Lara. I, I think, you know, he's, he's, you know, got the skills. He understands the course. I think what he's going to probably do is, is probably keep the pace honest early on so that if it does become tactical, there'll be fewer players. Yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. The women's field, uh, impressive as well. And some notable contenders includes another champion, the 2019 winner, Erica Kemp, mm -hmm. who won this race in 2019, running a 15K for the first time in her life. Uh, these others also will certainly be pushing for a, a top spot. Uh, and uh, you really like what Emily Sisson has done lately. I do. She just ran a 14.55 two weeks ago for 5K. And, you know, while that, that's, that's, you know, a, a third the distance of a 15K, it makes actually a very tactical race like this very enticing for her. I also like Contrita Coogan, uh, you know, great uh, distance runner. Uh, uh, her father, uh, interesting story, her father's an Olympian. Her her mother is Gwen Coogan, who won River Run, who's also an Olympian as well. So a great pedigree there, but she's she's got some chops. She'll she'll put it she'll put it in a good good show today. And one of the things when you prepare for these to look back and see who has done well lately, usually in most years, it's easy to find a lot of those results. It has been tougher this year. Sometimes you have to look back to the Olympic marathon trials, which happened last year. A number of these women ran and uh, contended very well. One I will keep an eye on is Laura Thweet. She was uh, one of the top runners at the Olympic qualifying is uh, finished fifth didn't make the olympic team but did certainly run a very good race in atlanta Absolutely. when we come back the starting gun will fire and we'll get the 44th edition of the gate river run underway right here on channel four Welcome back to our special live coverage of the 44th gate river run you see the two starting lines on the left, that will be the that'll be the uh, Adam Street start, and, and uh, rather the, uh, the Duval Street uh, on the left, and Adam Street on the right. All right, there we go. We'll, we're all learning as we go along here which one is which. Uh, and Keith Brantley, uh, we're also keeping a close eye. Of course, the elite women will be going off at 7:54. The opportunity to win the equalizer bonus. If the right, top woman finishes before the top men, be five thousand dollars in the pocket. That's something to shoot for. And there are some local runners who will be leaving from the start line as well among the women, uh, Keith, as they get ready here in the next couple of minutes. But we do want to mention that uh, Kelsey Beckman, Morgan Hull, and Kaylee Delay are all running. Who are Jacksonville runners? who have uh, qualified with a good enough time to run in this section. Yeah, in the elite section, yeah, absolutely. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a, a, a really competitive race on the local level as well. Yeah, for sure. And those will not qualify for the first Coast Cup, but uh, because they are leaving with the elites, you have to leave from the main pack this year to qualify for the first Coast Cup. We'll be talking about that here in just a moment. But there you are. You can see those elite runners. All right, folks. So we got they have shed like their warm-ups and are ready to go. With the uh, blue shorts there and the bright yellow shoes, that's Erica Kemp, former winner of this race and the only former champion on the women's side who is in this field. And here we go. They are underway. As you see, the masks coming off here in the opening stages for the elite women. There are 38 elite women in this field. At one point, it looked like it might be something north of 40. Uh, you see from the other start line, you saw the uh, wheelchair racers going. Keith, in this first mile, what are these top women looking for? Who are they looking for? And what are they trying to establish in the opening mile? Well, I think, first of all, they're just trying to make sure that the real players, the, the folks that are, you know, really, really have the chops to stay up in the race are going to be right up in there. And, you know, the, I, you know, I believe that looks like Emily Sisson right up front. Right. And, yep. and that just shocks me. 
because that's the last thing I think she should be doing is actually sitting, you know, right there with the. Uh, she should be sitting back in the in the back of the pack, just waiting. Uh, she's got the leg speed to be able to control this race from behind, and uh, it's it's uh, surprising. It's a pretty early gap to see any kind of gap at this point. Of course, tailwind, as you mentioned, uh, with the winds coming out of the north-northeast. Right now, uh, these runners are getting a little bit of a crosswind at their back over the right shoulder uh, as they run down Duval Street. Uh, and then they'll start to turn into the wind slowly but surely the more and more they go. By the time they get to Atlantic Boulevard, they're going to be facing that wind and then going up the bridge, the Hart Bridge. We know that's going to be a major issue and you can see the gap early on opened up here by Emily Sisson. Yeah, it, that that really surprises me. That that's the again the last thing I thought she would wanted to do, but you know, after running 1455, a pace of, you know, it, it the pace that they're running right now feels like a jog to her. Um, and you can see that the rest of the uh, elite pack, you have maybe two dozen of the runners staying together here. If you're in that pack and you're seeing Emily Sisson stretch it out like that, we well, have to think, all right, what's her plan today? Now she's made the first opening salvo here, a pretty notable one. Yeah, and, and you know, really what I'm thinking is that, you know, if it was, a, if it was an unknown runner, you know, a local runner or somebody that, that didn't have put up a fast time prior to this race, I'd be thinking, yeah, she's going to come back. But uh, that, those, the folks in the second pack there, they're thinking, well, we're running for second now. And you can see on the right, that is... Uh, the uh, opportunity for the elite men and uh, some of the other top runners to go here in just about three and a half minutes. But again, a six minute lead for these elite runners. And Emily Sisson continues to stretch the lead here in the opening mile. Uh, they will run all the way down Duval Street until Laura Street downtown. And anybody who's walked downtown in a windy day we'll know that once the wind gets down in between some of those big buildings it can it become even more intense it howls i was i was driving over and i was shocked at how much my car was being buffeted back and forth just driving through the the downtown buildings so just over three minutes into this race and emily sisson has really stretched out this lead you see the gap this would be the kind of gap you might expect to see three four miles into a race of this magnitude but as you mentioned, the way she has been running coming into this race has been awfully impressive. She won the Stanford Invitational 10,000 in 2019. She finished second at the USA Track and Field Championships in Des Moines uh, in 2019. So she is certainly an accomplished runner. There's no doubt about that. We will keep an eye on her and we'll keep an eye on the men who are about ready to start. We'll have the start of the men's elites when we come back. Our special coverage of the Gate River Run continues right here on Channel 4. Channel 4, the local station, is proud to present a national championship. This is special coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run, presented by H2 Health. And we welcome you back to our live continuing coverage of the Gate River Run. You can see the shot from downtown on the left it's emily sisson the leader in the women's competition and she is really stretching out her lead as she races down duval street on the right the men who will be going off in less than 30 seconds and again frank lara the 2020 champion shadrick kip kircher the 2019 champion are both in this field as is marty hay here the uh, sixth place finisher at the olympic marathon trials and uh, just about 15 seconds away from the start for the men and you continue to see Emily Sisson who has made that turn on Laura Street. She'll have another turn here in just a moment, but let's get with the men as they start here in the Gate River Run and they are underway and off from the start line. And you can see the wind buffeting that American flag. That is certainly going to be a factor off the right shoulders of these elite men. Let's keep an eye out and see who, if anybody tries to do, pull an Emily Sisson here early on and really stretch things out. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just a, a, a shocking turn of events. Like, you know, and, you know, she's probably got 20 seconds now. There does look to be a, um, a group, a couple of people wanting to go after her. All right, you can see on the left, Emily Sisson is working her way up the ramp to the Main Street Bridge. So she's heading across the St. John's River for the first of two traverses over water. 
And uh, big gap behind her at this point. Now she'll really start to get a tailwind uh, as well as she starts to work her way through. And uh, we do see a gap here on the right, trying to pick up who the lead runner is for the men. But we have seen some early moves in both classifications so far. Yeah, it's, uh, again, these, these uh, Emily and, and the, as soon as we find the name of the, this, uh, the male runner, uh, um, it, you know, they're either crazy like a fox. Um, you know, this is one style of doing it. If you know that there's going to be a strong headwind coming in, uh, you know, sometimes getting a gap like that is uh, probably a great idea. But uh, I, I'm shocked because Emily Sisson is such a track runner, track oriented runner that uh, she could win this race just by sitting back. You can see her, we'll keep a close eye on her on the left. Again, uh, she may have also been thinking about that equalizer bonus as much as anything, you know, again, Cole, considering I, prize you know, money matters. It, it, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, a win and the equalizer bonus is 15 grand right there. So, I mean, you know, it's, uh, and, and who knows? I, we haven't gotten an early split. So we, she may be actually going for the record. That would be Which something. Which if she does that on a day like today, uh, that would be an epic, epic performance. That would be a huge start. Again, we thought when the uh, initial, I'll call it a rough draft, the tentative start to the uh, men or the women's field came out that that could be a really loaded women's field, and that that some of those top runners could really push one another. Emily Sisson was one of those names that we saw, but there were others who we uh, thought might run, who changed their mind uh, as time went on. But, boy, what a start for Emily Sisson. Well, and she's, I was just counting down, and she's got at least 20 seconds ahead uh, of, the, of that second group. And, um, you know, it, 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 it is surprising. Now, what's happening is there's a second group, and two people have actually kind of uh, paired up. So that's a good thing when you got this. Now she's turning into the, now she's going to be turning a little bit into the wind as she comes off of the Main Street Bridge, uh, heading onto Prue, and uh, I I think she's going to get a sense as to what this wind feels like. Yeah, she'll get just uh, a bit of it. Again, uh, on Prudential Drive, it'll actually be pushing her, but she'll feel the full force of it as it comes across the uh, St. Johns River. Uh, it won't go fully into the wind really until she gets past the 5k mark uh, down along uh, River Road and then working the way into the uh, San Marco area and up toward Atlantic Boulevard. Keith, we saw Emily Sisson looking at her watch a little bit uh, in the early stages. What was she doing there? Well, you know, the, the watches today are so sophisticated, you can get a, a running average of the mile that you're currently running immediately. So you can get a great idea as to exactly how fast you're running. And it's fantastic. The other thing you'll get from it is also your heart rate information, which I, I look at heart rate as very much like a, a tachometer on a race car. Uh, you know where your red line is and you want to stay there. The interesting thing about using heart rate, as you become more and more dehydrated, your heart rate will stay the same, but your pace will have to drop a little bit. Now, again, Emily Sisson on the left with the uh, large lead, and you mentioned 20 seconds in the early stages, 20 seconds at the end of this race would be a massive win, but to 20 seconds at this point, very substantial. It, it is, and you know, one thing I've noticed, Cole, is that it doesn't seem to be that she's actually losing any more distance. Maybe uh, a second or so since the last time I said it, but I, I, it's, it's not like she's gained a lot more. Um, that 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 those two players in the back, I, I, again, I think that might be Erica Kemp. Uh, is uh, they're keeping her in their, in their sights. And again, this is going to be very interesting because to me, Emily Sisson looks like she's, she's you know, running comfortably, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure she can maintain this pace. Uh, the other uh, wave, the next wave has gone off from both the start lines. The blue wave uh, went earlier. Now this is the green wave going from the Duval Street uh, start line and then the orange wave from the Adam Street start line. And when you talk about these waves and seedings, this is all based on times run in races in the previous year. It could be a 5K, it could be a 10K, it could be a half marathon or a marathon. Uh, there are ways to take the uh, number and, and translate it to, to a certain time. But for those running 
in the green wave, for instance, uh, that is under 28 minutes in a 5K. Right. Pretty good time for a recreational it is. runner. It is. Uh, but depending on your age, maybe a really good time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from the the orange wave is a uh, basically a nine uh, under a 10 minute pace on on a 15 on a 5K or a 10K. So again. Decent time, stuff that most folks would be pretty happy with. These are runners who go out there and run fairly regularly, many of whom may have run in high school or college. Uh, others may have taken it up later in life, but they have now gone off. And again, we're keeping a close eye on the leaders here. Emily Sisson on the left. And we're trying to identify the one runner on the right at this point. You can see with uh, the camera going over the bridge, trying to identify this leader. Yeah, he looks like he's working pretty hard. Um, it, uh, again, you know, it, it's it's hard to tell what they are feeling with respect to the wind, but at this point, they have a nice, nice tailwind, so it feels really good. Um, having uh, led a few races, uh, particularly the Boston Marathon, I back in uh, you know, the uh, uh, mid '90s, I led through. 16 miles and it, it's a very lonely experience <laughs> um, but uh, if you have confidence in your training and you feel that you're you're uh, prepared then you might as well go for it the worst thing to do is to try to drop your stride and not have a uh, a good well that was a telling sign Cole I don't know if you just saw that but he just looked back and that's probably not a, a great thing to do when you're uh, you're also giving the people behind you a sense that uh, there's fresh meat out there. Well, Satchel Paige <laughs> once said, the great pitcher, never look back. You don't know what might be gaining on you. Exactly. <laughs> and we may have just seen that here in the opening couple of miles of the Gate River Run. Again, we're also uh, tracking uh, Emily Sisson and her progress. There's Emily on the left who has really stretched out this lead. And again, we'll be looking for some splits. And uh, Keith, you're keeping a close eye on that as we continue on here. Uh, we should get a 5K official split from the race. The time, that's the first timing point. That will happen uh, toward the end of the run through San Marco Boulevard, just before the turn onto River Road. And you can see that she is on San Marco Boulevard right now. For those of you who are used to uh, seeing this area of town, very recognizable shopping area and neighborhood in Jacksonville. And uh, she will be heading down toward Landon, or rather Laverne Street first for the turn. And that'll be about where that uh, timing, uh, first timing indication is of uh, how Emily Sisson is doing. But Keith, uh, she looks very comfortable as, uh, as she is running in. So we've identified the men's leader right now is John Ranieri. And uh, he is certainly one to keep an eye on who has made this early move. Ranieri, a former North Carolina Tar Heel, two-time NCAA cross-country qualifier. And he does a lot of his running indoors. Interesting note on John Ranieri, he owns the half marathon world record on a treadmill. Uh, so for those of you who think you it doesn't count if you're not out on the road. Don't tell John Ranieri that. Yeah, no, no, abs absolutely. And if you've ever run on a treadmill significant distance, uh, it takes one, a lot of concentration. Uh, two, it is boring. Yes. <laughs> so kudos to him. <laughs> Got to have something good on TV, right? To keep you occupied. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you're braving the weather uh, to watch the Gate River run here, we want to certainly understand what's going here at the uh, start lines as the next start waves are getting ready to be sent out and there they go from both start lines here at 810 these two waves sending off the yellow wave and the blue uh, the black wave rather again these are qualified times uh, yellow and black this is a 10 to 11 minute pace which uh, is slow and steady but uh, they'll get you there and if you're braving the weather to watch the Gate River Run, upload your pictures and videos to Snapjacks. Just go to newsforjacks.com slash snapjacks and add them to the Community Events channel. We'll be sharing them on air and online throughout the weekend. Our coverage of the Gate River Run continues. Emily Sisson leading and putting up a very good time as she weaves her way onto River Road in San Marco. 
We'll have an update on her time and the race when we continue right here on Channel 4. You know, we continue our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run. On the left, it's Emily Sisson, who went through the first 5K in 1539. She had a 17-second lead on the field, passing that 5K mark. You can see she just went by the four-mile mark there in San Marco, working her way past Watney Park, and she'll take a left turn onto River Oaks here and then onto Hendricks, and she'll start to get a feel for that wind in her face at this point. She's on a near-record pace right now. Let's see if she can keep it up, though, for sure. Let's head out to the field and uh, bring in Jennifer Reddy, who's there with Julie Stackhouse, the five-time winner of the First Coast Cup. Uh, guys, uh, give me a thought here on what you're seeing right now with Emily Sisson. Hey, Cole, yeah, I'll let Julie weigh in on that, especially because of your experience. And we did have an opportunity to speak with her. And one of the things that really stood out is this is her first time running this Gate River Run. It is, Jen, and she's so excited. And she's just really tuned up right now. She had a great track race, uh, personal best 5K time in 1455 out in Los Angeles. And so, you know, I think today's just a good chance to test those wheels in a little bit longer distance. And we also do see another wave going off right behind us right now. For some of these runners who are everyday runners, you know, what's their approach as they kick off this race and what goes into that mindset really starting ahead of these nine miles? Yeah, you know, this is really great for me. I don't normally get to see this part of it. It's been really fun. Um, the mindset is that there's so much hype and so much energy and enthusiasm on the start line that, it, in fact, as a coach, I tend to have to rein them in a little bit this first mile because there's just so much excitement, they tend to go out a bit fast, and that heart bridge is waiting for them at the end. So I just think today the energy is palpable, and people are so excited to have a big race, um, especially for the locals in their hometown to be able to race in a national championship like this. Um, they're just fired up. So the preparation going in has just been this week, rest, and uh, you know, just a, a long, gradual buildup. There's been a lot of time to build up for this race. And you talk about the energy being palpable. We heard that firsthand from a lot of these elite runners who are already well into this race. We had an opportunity to sit down and speak with them, and they really just talked about how special this moment is after a year of really not being able to compete. Colin Benny has been racing for nearly 15 years. So I really kind of got into it back um, in middle school. But last year, the professional runner didn't get to compete much. I went pretty close to eight full months without racing. That's because COVID-19 shut down races across the country for months. You know, it was really tough just to have such a sort of just open-ended future in terms of what was going to come up next in terms of racing. Um, so sort of finding that motivation to keep training even when you weren't really sure what was going to be next was um was definitely challenging at times he used the time to keep training i think it, it kind of let us all sort of just take a step back and enjoy enjoy running and training for for what it was and now he is racing in the gate river run what are you looking forward to most about this race specifically um that's a good I, I just really a lot of a lot of good competition. I mean, I know, you know, everybody's been sort of just kind of waiting for some of these big road races to come back and and, um, and be available. So I'm sure we're going to have no shortage of uh, really good elite athletes there. He's right about that. Race organizers say the elite field is one of the best in recent years. And the, the Gate River Run is, uh, you know, is, is really special to them because they have had very few opportunities to run. In the women's field, M. Sisson. What does it mean to you to be able to compete in the Gate River Run after not being able to compete much last year? Um, I just feel like I don't take any of these opportunities for granted anymore. I just like am so, so appreciative of them because we went a whole year without racing. An extra feeling of appreciation as the pros run each and every mile of the 15K National Championship. And Julie, one of the things both of us talking to them, I mean, we both have experience running you far better than I do. But one of the things we both took away from our conversation with them was the relatability that's out on the course today, both for the elite runners, but also the people who just do this as a hobby because of the past year and not being able to train for really any specific race. 
Absolutely. I, for sure, I can say that running and just getting out and moving in general, right? A lot of the gyms were shut down. The roads are always open. Uh, running has been such a great outlet for people during this year, but it was really neat for me to hear from a pro's perspective that really they had a lot of the same struggles that we did, finding that motivation to, you know, what am I training for? What am I getting out there for? Um, but also having the silver lining of, you know, Emily Sisson saying, this was an opportunity to go back and work on my strength. Um, so working on those things that maybe when you had a race every weekend, you weren't able to do. Yeah, great silver lining and a lot of positivity. And we're certainly seeing that positivity here this morning. We will continue to bring you live coverage throughout the morning. But for right now, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. We continue our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run. Emily Sisson leads on the left. Men's leader John Ranieri on the right as the leaders approach the halfway mark of the race. Let's check in with Lena Pringle and Mike Ryan who are in San Marco. Of course, Mike, many of you will remember as the longtime head athletic trainer for the Jaguars, also a great triathlete. Uh, Lena, what's the atmosphere like there at Watley Park in the San Marco area? <laughs> A good morning, Cole. You know, as we've been talking all morning long, it's definitely excitement. We have the music playing in the background and the runners are off to a strong start. And so, you know, Mike, we just had the elite women's group pass by as well as the first male elite runner. What are your thoughts on the race so far? It's turned out to be a great race. Emily Sisson looks really strong. She seems to have opened that over that 17 second gap she had at the 5K, but she's not letting up. She has a big gap. She looks strong. This may be her first 15K, but don't tell her that she's going out strong. She looks great. And you know, at this point in the race, what do runners need to do to prepare for the Heart Bridge? Well, the Heart Bridge is coming. I stood up there this morning and it's very windy. And they're gonna have a headwind coming into that finish. Although it's a downhill fast finish, right now they're trying to be as efficient as they can because they know if they pay the price now and they get a little buffer from the wind and they get on that Heart Bridge and the wind's gonna be stronger, it may be trouble. So you don't wanna get onto that bridge and have to make up ground. You wanna be efficient now. So when you get on that bridge and you have a buffer, you can maintain that lead and make your move. And you know, we know this race brings runners of all experiences and backgrounds to the River City to compete. It all started back in 1977, and now there's an elite group of runners that have been participating every year since then. They're known as the Streakers. I introduce you to one of them, Patrick Gahan. What is the hardest part of the race for you? Honestly, it is standing at the starting line. A starting line this great, great grandfather has been at 44 years in a row. Patrick Gahan is part of an elite group of runners known as the Streakers. There's less than 30 of them still participating. We kind of all became part of a club that now has gone on for 45 years and it's almost like, you know, I, I'd like to get out of it in a way, but I, I can't because, well, I've got to make it another year. Gahan is a retired city of Jacksonville employee who now is a medical missionary. 15 years ago, I just felt that I wanted to give back to the world, so to speak. And I went back to school, I retired. I went back to school and became a registered nurse. And through really God's leading, I wound up in West Africa and met a plastic surgeon and he got me involved in doing cleft lip and palate repair. As a resident of Cameroon, he also does free surgeries for inmates in prisons across Africa and teaches his faith in the local schools. In the past four decades, Gahan says it hasn't always been easy to get home from remote areas of the world to participate in the Gate River Run, but he hasn't missed a race yet, even with some close calls. Because of COVID, he hasn't been able to travel back to Africa, so in the last year, he's been working as an RN, providing COVID testing and now vaccinations. Even with a full plate, he still manages to run at least 30 miles a week for training. How long do you plan on keeping the streak going? Well, I said if I can do 50, I will consider it a major accomplishment. But at 50, when 51 comes around, can't say I won't get talked into going and doing another one. Gahan says he enjoys the solitude, competition, and overall good shape running provides. He reminds runners to focus on their own course. Set some standard, finishing the race, winning the race, whatever it is. You know, it, uh, to me, the best thing to do is to be happy with yourself, whatever you 
whatever you've determined and not be re relying on somebody else's what made them happy because it's an individualistic sport. Staying his individual course, 44 years in a row. Gahan will lace up with thousands of other runners hoping to leave their mark on this year's race. Running has done so much for me because I've been on a regimen for 44 years of always you know, wanting to stay in some kind of shape, always, uh, you know, taking care of my body, somewhat watching what I eat. All these things have all factored into it, and it all centers back around a race on one day in the course of a year. Not even a pandemic could stop this streak decades in the making, with hopes it will continue for more decades to come. While Patrick's last name is spelled just like our beloved weatherman John Gons, he tells me they're not related. The only relationship they have is through the Gate River Run. So definitely we're wishing the streakers and all the runners out here the best of luck because not even the pandemic could stop this year's Gate River Run. Now stick with us. More of our run coverage will continue right after this break. There it is, the Green Monster, the Heart Bridge. For some, the longest mile. <laughs> been it's there, about a mile that. span, Keith, you've been over that one. I've been there, done that. Emily Sisson is now on the ramp up to the Heart Bridge. You see her on the left. She had a 38 second lead on her closest competitor, Lindsay Flanagan, at the 10K split. We'll uh, see her with plenty of room. She's also certainly in line to get the equalizer bonus and the extra five thousand dollars right now because the uh, men's leader uh, has been caught by the pack the peloton has caught up peloton. to john ranieri and uh, we'll keep a close eye on that but keith right now emily sisson who has been running alone since about the 50 meter mark of this race is now at uh, about eight miles into this 9.3 mile course as she starts working her way up the bridge She's going to encounter some serious wind. Physically, what does she have to do? And mentally, what is it going to take? Well, I, I think physically, she just has to keep her rhythm. This is one of those things where you don't want to start pressing. You don't want to start using your arms. And, you know, she obviously has, you know, she, she really uses her arms when she races. It's, it's quite evident. But I think in the end, you don't want to overextend yourself trying to climb uh, the, you know, a, a portion of the, of the race. It only takes about three minutes. These, these elite runners are going to get up this, this bridge in about three to four minutes. But I think the, the thing that I think is most impressive is she has never run a 15K before. And she took this race from the very beginning. And uh, on a day like today where I would be scared to death of this wind uh, and how it affects you in the last uh, third of the race, uh, it's amazing. It's one of the best athletic performances I've seen on this course. We saw a big performance last year by Mariel Hall, who won. Uh, by the time she hit San Marco, she was all alone. But she didn't stretch the gap like Emily Sisson has in the early stages. And Sisson, you see her going over the little joist there, a little joint that connects the uh, bridge itself to the ramp. And uh, you can see a couple of runners behind her. But that's a big gap here that's, for this part of the race. Once she gets to the top, it's all literally downhill it, from there. It is, and especially with somebody with her leg speed, uh, running downhill for her is a joy. I mean, she's got uh, great, great leg speed, and and uh, you know it, it would take a disaster for somebody to come after her uh, and, and beat her at this point. Yeah, you can see her cadence is down a bit. She's moved over to the very side, maybe trying to get a little bit of protection. Uh, the wind is pushing her to that side. The wind is off her right shoulder here and uh, and facing. So she is really working up the hill and into the wind. A absolutely. You can see she's being buffeted back and forth. You know, you runners typically of her, her caliber are, are straight in line. They're either right on that white line. Uh, she's trying to run the tangent, but it doesn't seem like she's, she's really able to. She's trying to find probably a sweet spot and, and some wind shadow there. But, you know, she's cresting. And, and, and quite honestly, Cole, I mean, this does not give you a sense of how steep that bridge is. Let's go to the top of the hard bridge. Jamal St. Cyr is there for us. Jamal? M. Sisson is heading your way. 
Yep, she's coming right up the bridge right now, and I heard Keith just talking about serious wind. Uh, the gusts up here have been very strong all morning, and as she's coming up that bridge, she has a face full of wind as she runs through the wall right now. She's making it over the top of the bridge, and she's going to start working her way down now. The winds up here have been strong all morning long, and she is running right through that wind as she moves into the final mile. Uh, the Green Monster, definitely a serious challenge for runners this year, uh, even a little bit more than years past because the winds are just so strong. Last year, I was up here for the race at the top of the Hart Bridge, and I saw runners almost look like they were running in place as gusts of wind hit them. And this year, the winds are even stronger than they were last. We've got a couple of other runners pretty close here on Emily Stinson's tail. They're working their way up through that wall of wind here on the Hart Bridge right now. Uh, definitely a challenge for these runners as they work their way through this final little bit of the course here. And uh, the winds up here are not making this any easier on them. The run is definitely intense and the winds up here have been howling all morning long as these runners try and battle through the winds as they move into the final stretch of the course here. Cole, Keith, the, the Green Monster is definitely a challenge for runners this year. See the pain on some runners' faces <laughs> as they try to work their way over the top. With the one mile to go split, Emily Sisson had uh, clocked a time of 43.08. So, Keith, as she heads down the last mile to go, she certainly uh, is going to put up a time that's going to be in the top 10 all time at the Gate River Run. She has a chance to be the fifth female to run sub 48 for sure. Mm -hmm. We'll just see how she can negotiate the downhill even with that wind. Uh, you can see her kind of opening up her stride here after really battling her way to the top. Yeah, and that, that again, this is a class she, she sees that, you know, right now for her, you know, breaking 48 minutes would be just a huge, huge benefit. Uh, she's she's going to win the equalizer bonus by a long shot, and I think, it, you know, in the end, she, this is, again, one of the best performances I've seen in a very, very long time in a road race. Lindsay Flanagan was second. We saw her laboring her way up to the top. She is about 55 seconds behind Emily Sisson at that point. And uh, here is Sisson, she is off the bridge, she's onto the, the ramp that uh, will lead her down toward the sports complex. And she is going to be the runaway winner on the women's side of the 2021 Gate River Run. She's gonna pocket 10,000 for the win and it looks fairly certain at this point she's gonna pocket the extra $5,000 for that equalizer bonus because she has put a huge gap between herself and every other runner on this course. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, I think that uh, this was a choice she made very early on and she made that commitment very, very early on, probably from the first mile. She was clear of the, of the leaders by about five seconds at the first mile. And we can tell you that as far as the men are concerned, the uh, early leader, John Ranieri, uh, has just been passed by Baya Simbasa. Clayton Young and Kiribel Irasa are also right there. There is a large group that just went across the uh, one mile to go within a second of one another. So this is going to be a race to the finish for the men, but this is a crowning moment for M. Sisson, who is going to come home with a victory here. She won the U.S. 5K championship in 2018. She has been a top runner pretty much her whole life. In high school, she won four state cross country championships at three different schools. So wherever she's been, <laughs> she has won. You can see the men's group there on the right, very tightly packed together on uh, the downhill of the Hart Bridge. But M. Sisson is coming in with an opportunity for a big day, not only in terms of her pocketbook, but her performance as well. She'll take this swing to the left and then she'll be able to see the finish line in view and what a run by M. Sisson. Yeah and it's interesting the contrast between the two styles uh, of, of races uh, between the men and the women uh, you know M got out there and just you know put the gauntlet down and said you know you're gonna you're gonna have to beat me today this, the race on the men's side has turned into a, uh, a, a very tactical affair, even though Ranieri was out trying to push the pace and, and really, you know, pulling him, Sisson. But I think uh, this, this is a good, strong field. And here comes Sisson down the final stretch, and we'll see what her final time will be. But M. Sisson 
is the winner of the 2021 Gate River Run. She breaks the tape. She won the equalizer bonus and the national championship in the 15K. What a run for M. Sisson. Absolutely, and she, she didn't quite get under 48 minutes. 48.10 maybe? 48.02, oh. uh, 48.09 rather. So we were uh, very close in terms of, of talking about her breaking 48. That is though the fifth fastest Gate River Run ever run by a woman. It, that it's, that's incredible. Like I said, based on the conditions today, even though it was cool, uh, you really were taking a chance. She took a huge chance um, making sure that uh, she did not hit a wind that would slow her down and have the second pack catch her. Now, there's drama on the men's side. <laughs> Look at this pack of runners. One, two, three, four, five, six right together. A couple more trailing as they come down the final stretch. This is all about a kick here as they make that left turn off the bottom of the bridge ramp. Yeah, and you know, I think if there's any runner that's got an advantage here is Kirbo or, Sa or Sasa. He uh, just ran a very low 13 minute 5K um, just recently, uh, two weeks ago in the race in uh, San Juan Capistrano. And I'll tell you, they, they put it down and it's gonna be really interesting. Uh, I've often said this, you know, it, uh, you know, it's the one who makes the last move that wins, and uh, uh, it looks like. And here is the men's winner of the 2021 Gate River Run. Clayton Young has crossed the finish line first in a very close finish here at the end. Clayton Young at 43.52. So his time uh, well off of the top 10 all time here at the Gate River Run, a much more tactical race as far as the men are concerned. But Clayton Young, who's studying for his Masters in Mechanical Engineering at BYU, takes the win. He's the 2019 NCAA champion at 10,000 meters. He was an eight-time All-America at BYU. And he has won the Gate River Run for the men, but the story of the day has to be M. Sisson and her performance here today, running 48.09, the fifth fastest time in the history of the Gate River Run, and she took control of this race, Keith, right from the beginning. Well, and, and uh, again, Cole, I, I can't emphasize this enough, uh, to take this race by the, by the horns and just throw down that gauntlet. And this is a good field. Even though we had a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, do no, you know, uh, people drop out uh, before the start of the race, uh, it was still a stacked field. It was. And now let's visit with the national champion in the 15K, M. Sisson, who just turned in this amazing performance draped in the Stars and Stripes. And congratulations, you took control of this race right from the beginning. Uh, was that your idea going in or did it just play out that way? Yeah, thank you. No, I wanted to run pretty aggressively from the start. Um, with the wind, that was kind of an unexpected element, so I had to run a bit off field. But uh, it was, this was an amazing field. They did a great job putting this on. I had a great time. Well, you ran uh, 48.09. We mentioned the fifth fastest time in the history of this event. And it seemed at no time were you really pressed uh, from really the first 50 or 75 meters you were able to build a bit of a lead. Was there a point in this race where you felt distressed at all? Um, yeah, I was a little surprised. No one went with me from the start. And at first I'm like, oh, no, maybe I'm run, running a little too fast. <laughs> um, maybe it's going to come back and bite me in the butt. But, um, no, it was good. It, I felt pretty good. The only part that I found really tricky was the last uh, bridge. Um, at the end, I was going up into the wind on it, and I like, felt like I was nearly walking. But um, then we had the downhill to the finish, so that was, that was nice. Yeah, it was quite a performance. Uh, you mentioned the wind. Uh, as you went up the Hart Bridge there, that's a, that's a tough mile to get up to the top and then to head back down. Uh, what was your thought going in as you, as you made that turn and started going up the ramp toward the bridge? Um, I hadn't used like a lot of positive self-talk going up that bridge because it was so hard. Um, but I kept telling myself, you're nearly there, you're nearly to the top. And then when, once you're at the top, it's all downhill to the finish. So I kind of just had to encourage myself to get to the top of that bridge because it was so hard. 
Well, em, thanks so much for taking some time with us. Congratulations. You're the national champion at 15K. Thank you. And you are the winner of the 2021 Gate River Run. Thank you. When we come back, we'll hear from the men's winner, Clayton Young, taking the men's side. We'll hear from him as our coverage of the Gate River Run continues right here on Channel 4. We welcome you back to our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run. You see the finish line there with a number of the uh, top runners coming home. Nobody more pleased than the two individuals who get to drape themselves in the American flag here at the end of the race as national champions of the 15K, including this man, Clayton Young, our men's champion. Clayton, congratulations. Uh, very tactical race today. Give me a feel for that last mile in particular. It was a pretty busy finish line. Absolutely. I mean, uh, they don't call it the Green Monster for nothing, and I was surprised that there was such a pack at the top of that that uh, gigantic overpass. But, uh, wow, I uh, hadn't ran this last mile before, and so I didn't know when to make my move, but I saw the finish line, and I was like, well, now or never. And so I made my move and uh, just uh, didn't look back. Uh, so Clayton, this is Keith Brantley. Uh, uh, fantastic race today. Um, is your coach Ed Eyestone? That's correct. Fantastic. Uh, in fact, when we were preparing for this race, I asked him, I was like, huh, should I do the 15K champs or not? And he's like, wait a second, is that the Gate River Run? And I was like, yep. And he's like, well, I won it twice back in the day, so you might as well go for it. Absolutely. So I, I knew there was some cross-pollination there. And, uh, you know, I was on uh, several national teams with, the, with Ed back in the day, and I know he's, he's prepared you well, and, and congratulations. Did you guys have any, uh, do you have any more uh, uh, plans for, for the rest of the season uh, in terms of road races and, and championships? Yeah, actually, um, you know, we just kind of came off a mini indoor outdoor mm -hmm. track season and uh, we thought we'd give my my try at a at a 15K and, and we're going to probably take it down a little bit, get a base phase and then gear up for the Olympic trials on the track. I'll be uh, taking a go at the 10K. Well, if you have the uh, kind of race you had today uh, for the 10K, you'll have a, a pretty darn good 2021. Clayton, congratulations. You're the national champion at 15K and the winner of the 2021 Gate River Run. Thanks for taking some time out and enjoy the rest of the day. Absolutely. Thank you. That's Clayton Young, our men's champion in the Gate River Run. We'll take time out when we come back. Some of the top local runners are heading for the finish line. We'll detail the first Coast Cup race when we continue. It's our live coverage. As you see, a lot of runners making the turn at Watley Park in the San Marco area. More to come right here on Channel 4. Twenty twenty one Gate River Run. We have crowned our champions, and now a large field, some eight thousand still to cross the finish line. Maybe a little less than eight thousand. Yeah. We've had about a hundred finishers or so so far. But uh, Keith Brantley, watching how this thing played out today, the way that M Sisson took control of this course from the very beginning, uh, you, you talked about it as one of the most impressive athletic achievements you've seen in a while. Well, it, it is because, again, with the unknown of what the wind's going to be doing, where it's going to be, be hitting you, uh, you can be in a, and you can have 20 seconds on a lead pack, and all of a sudden, boom, you have no help at all uh, to break that wind, and you're, you're running backwards, basically, and then that second pack catches you. Well, and then we saw on the men's side, as you see, uh, Sisson's finished there. Clayton Young with a big kick at the end. Guy who's run a lot of 10,000 meters races through the years. Uh, but he got some good advice on how to run this 15K. Well, you know, his coach is a two-time winner, Ed Eyestone, Olympian. Uh, you know, I raced against Ed back in the day. And, you know, Ed's one of these guys that uh, is very pragmatic, has laid everything out for him, and he did a great job. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting, as you see, we did really see two very different races today. You mentioned it. Uh, you had one breakaway from the very beginning with the women, with M. Sisson, and then for the men, very tactical, very bunched up, and then in the last uh, basically 50 meters, you saw a kick to separate a pack of six or seven runners. You expected more of that kind of a race on the women's side today, but boy, Sisson just took charge. Yeah, absolutely, and it just shows, you know, a 1455 5K three weeks ago was head and shoulders above everybody else in the field, and that just makes the entire 15K feel like a jog. 
really at that pace when you're going through the first 5K in 1539, a minute and a half slower. Uh, it, it, was a easy, it was an easy race for her today. And both have won the national championships. Both will get the $10,000 check. And M. Sisson gets the equalizer bonus, an extra 5K in her pocket. She's, she's buying tonight. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how she's going to celebrate or where, but <laughs> whoever she's celebrating with, just got to push that check over toward her uh, tonight <laughs> after winning here in the Gate River. And remember, these elite runners arrived yesterday. They've been basically quarantined in a hotel, and now they get out and have a chance to run. You see Stephen West, a local runner, just crossing right. there. Absolutely. Uh, a guy who has gotten faster and faster the older he's gotten. Right. Uh, so a big finish there. When we come back, we'll hear from one of the fastest women in Jacksonville. Kelsey Beckman ran in the elite field, was not eligible for the first Coast Cup, but she was the first local woman to cross the finish line. We'll hear from Kelsey when we come back as our continuing coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run rolls on right after this. Channel 4, the local station, is proud to present a national championship. This is special coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run, presented by H2 Health. You see the finish line and more runners running across, a few walking across the finish line <laughs> here at the Gate River Run. We'll continue our coverage up until 10 o'clock. Last year, Part of our coverage was Kelsey Beckman. She did not run in the race. She did run in the Olympic marathon trials. And this year she lined up with the elites and uh, ran and just uh, came in at 47.49. Kelsey joins us now near the finish line. Kelsey, congratulations. Uh, let me ask you first, how big a factor was the win today? Well, the good part about the neighborhoods is you can hide from it for a little bit, but I kind of knew the whole race that I wasn't going to hide on the Hart Bridge. And so I was kind of just preparing myself for that and then um, just prepared to put one foot in front of the other on the bridge. But it was it was pretty tough on the bridge. I'll, I won't lie to you. Overall, uh, pleased with your run today? I'm really excited. I think that um, having the Gate River run and then having such a great field out here, I was really hungry to come back because I hadn't um, raced since 2017 here. Yeah. Kelsey, uh, this is Keith Brantley. Um, great race today. Fantastic. Was the wind a, a factor on Atlantic when you're approaching the uh, Hart Bridge? Yes, absolutely. And I think the hardest part about being, if you will, a local elite is we don't have those big packs. And I tried to stay in a group of women as long as I could. But to be honest, I was I was pretty solo at that point, Keith. And so I knew that that was making it a little bit more challenging for me. So I was trying to um, just find my own rhythm as best as I could. Kelsey, we saw um, in one of our program monitors here uh, as the uh, men's pack came by you, you kind of had to look over there like, who is this guy? Uh, when you're in that situation and you, you have that six minute lead and, and the, the men's pack comes up, once you see that first man, man run past you, does it change the way you approach the race? You know, I've had it in the past where Ben True has passed me like I was standing still, and he's such a giant human that I think that it, like, caught me off guard. So I was ready. I'm like, where's Ben? Where is he? Um, but at the same time, like, I think that it was um, – I was kind of geeking out because I, I follow all of these guys on Instagram, and I'm like, focus, don't ask for their autographs. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's more just like I'm, like, starstruck more than anything. <laughs> Well, one of the great stories about Kelsey is that she and her uh, now fiance, Cody Pontius, had a bet that if she qualified for the Olympic marathon trials, that she could get a dog. She did. She did. And now Gulliver is the star of Kelsey's Instagram, Instagram feed. Uh, how do you celebrate with Gully tonight? Um, I'm thinking that I should have made another dog bet with Cody so Goalie could have um, a new best friend. And so I'm kind of regretting not making a puppy bet this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lesson for everybody as you prepare for the Gate River Run. 
Make a puppy bet. It's the way <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Kelsey, thanks so <laughs> much. Bet. Congratulations on a great run and a way to represent Jacksonville. All right, Kelsey Beckman, uh, who was on our broadcast last year, and again, mm -hmm. as she was preparing to run in the uh, Olympic marathon trials, she didn't run in the gate, hadn't run for the last couple of years, but as you mentioned, uh, as she mentioned, uh, really looking forward to this race and ran a great race today. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, you know, when you, there was a great question you, you asked her about being passed. Um, you know, it, it is very distracting. It is, uh, you know, somewhat disheartening because they're going by so fast. But, you know, if you can hang on by a little bit, you can draft them just a little bit. So yeah. it does help. Yeah, especially if you get a bigger runner running by. Again, you see the finish line and you see the, the uh, celebrations for some of these runners some of which look fresher coming across the finish line than others. Let's uh, check in once again with Jen Reddy and Julie Stackhouse. Julie, always look fresh coming across the finish line. Uh, guys, uh, your feeling on how things have played out so far at the Gate River Run? Hey, yeah, good morning. And Julie, I want to bring you right into this conversation because right from the bat, when we've been talking over the last few weeks, you said that M. Sisson was one of the front runners for you. You thought she had the potential to really take this race away. And boy, did she take it away. She really did, Jen. I'm so proud of her and just the commanding way in which she did it from the gun. That's really impressive, and especially in conditions like this, that really does make the race that much tougher. And she just went for it from the beginning and put the hammer down. And I do want to talk about the conditions because you have experience running this race. You have experience running in the wind. And as we were watching her come across the Hart Bridge, you were commenting on how you could see how it was impacting her running across that bridge. What is that like from a runner's standpoint who's done it before? Oh, my goodness. First of all, you know it's coming the entire race. So you're in the back of your mind. It's kind of lurking, right? And it's, and it's there. And for these elites, you know, it really does affect their time. Um, they can be right on point going into that bridge. And if they've never run it before, and then you've got the wind on top of it. So how it felt last year, and to me it looked a little worse this year, is that it was a sideways wind. So it's kind of in your face on the way up. And as you're coming down, you think you're going to get that push and it's still pushing you from the side. And I was watching her body language and she was bracing on that right side. Um, you know, still looking very relaxed and strong, but she was absolutely bracing against that wind. And talking from about the men's field, we saw Clayton take it away and win that one. But early this morning, you really weren't sure who was going to win. Yeah, I felt like the men's field was so strong and that it would be more of a pack type of race. And it was. Um, but again, for Clayton to, you know, he trains out at BYU to uh, come off and have such a strong finish and, and pull away like that. Um, you know, there was, theirs was a bit more of a tactical race, uh, but I'm really proud of him as well. And for somebody who, again, has run this race before, are these conditions better than the heat and the humidity? What would you prefer as a runner? Personally, I would take this over heat and humidity <laughs> any day. Uh, but, you know, it does change it tactically for the runners. So to me, that makes it that much more fun. Um, but there is no doubt that the Heart Bridge was, uh, is, is probably breaking a lot of hearts today, Jen. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. And did you expect the women's field for M. Sisson to be ahead by? that much you know I, I I had pegged her from the beginning and yes based upon her uh, lightning fast 5k out in LA a couple weeks ago I did think that but still in a national championship race to be able to have such a commanding lead like that is really impressive all right well Julie thank you for your insight a big congratulations to the winners Cole we're gonna send it back to you guys in studio all right uh, Jen thank you so much well uh, last year and for the previous five years Julie Stackhouse was a first Coast Cup winner Two years ago, she came across the line just about the same time as the, the men's first Coast Cup winner that year. Uh, that is Chris McCaffrey, a very recognizable face for those of you in the running community. Chris works at First Place Sports and uh, did not win the first Coast Cup this year. But hi, Chris. Uh, How did your race go? Uh, How did you feel about your Gate River run here in 2021? Today was definitely one of those fun races. I, uh, I went out with a little bit, uh, not as strong of a, a goal that I had last year when I broke 50. I knew I was in pretty decent shape and uh, I felt needed to be a little bit more realistic. And uh, my goal was to see if I can get under 51. And I think I was just a tad uh, over that. So I'd say I, I pretty much nailed it today, given all the conditions. And, uh, and I absolutely do love racing in this weather.
So, hey, Chris, congratulations. This is Keith Brantley. Uh, fantastic race. Um, how did you feel when you're going up gate, the, the, the Hart Bridge? Did you feel that the wind was really a huge, huge factor? Because we saw runners being buffeted back and forth, and, you know, going up that bridge is tough enough, but when you've got the added factor of the wind, how, how did that affect you? Well, I'm Irish, and there's a saying that the uh, wind will always be at your back. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> That's what I used, and Good that's how I uh, kind of really pushed myself up and over the bridge today. But in all honesty, I mean, it was a huge task. I definitely feel most of the 15K was raced in the last two kilometers of this race, and you really had to dig deep and kind of go to your happy place. <laughs> and I'm sure you're familiar with doing that, Absolutely. you know, as an Olympian. So. <laughs> yeah, Keith knows the happy place. Out on the runs, I only know the pain and misery mostly. Uh, but Chris, as you as you got out there, the two different starting lines uh, and and the the field coming together just before the uh, the Main Street Bridge, how, how was that in terms of kind of uh, that merge and and the the different uh, uh, first mile of this race? Yeah, I I definitely feel it would have been a, maybe a little bit uh, of a more kind of interesting uh, factor, you know, as we we let off right after the elite men, and so as we kind of merged, there was maybe only a trickle. Uh, you know, coming off the other line, coming off of our line, merging into that one street. But I definitely feel like if you're in any of the waves behind that first blue wave or so, you definitely had kind of a zipper effect that you'd really have to learn how to merge. And maybe those people aren't paying attention, so you just got to be a little bit more on edge. But I felt like that was a really unique way to kind of, you know, separate the race, keep everybody in their own areas, and then kind of bring them back together right before the uh, kind of race should get underway. You know, that first mile should never be the fastest, and it's a great way to kind of just settle into your own pace. Well, Chris McCaffrey, thanks for spending some time with us after the Gate River Run 51-21 for Chris today. Always great to talk to you after the race, Chris, and uh, congratulations. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. All right, when we come back, we'll hear from our first Coast Cup winner, a young runner who put up a huge time today. That's straight ahead as our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run continues right here on Channel 4 and on News4Jax.com. Continue our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run. You see the finish line there. Runners coming across the line. Now we're 1230 as it is right now. Of course, we not only highlight the national champions who win this race, but also the top local runners. Each and every year, the top local men and women finishers win the first Coast Cup. And this year, our men's first Coast Cup winner is Sam Sultanova, former UNF Osprey. Sam, thanks for jumping on with us. Congratulations. Uh, how did the run lay out for you today? Uh, yeah, I felt, I felt really good. Uh, you know, I was definitely disappointed not, you know, being in the elite field, but, you know, took what I had got. Uh, started around two minutes uh, after the elite guys and kind of tried to, you know, go conservative because it was definitely, you know, not the best conditions. And things started 508, felt very comfortable. I think dropped it to maybe 445. And then, you know, just took what the race gave me. 47.59, your finishing time. Did you have a, a goal in mind in terms of how fast you wanted to run? Uh, to be honest, not really. Um, in my mind, you know, I just wanted to kind of race uh, after, you know, knowing that, you know, I wasn't going to be in the elite field. I kind of just wanted to, uh, you know, see bodies and, you know, pass them at the end. And I kind of, you know, I think I did that, you know, throughout the race. I passed a lot of the guys that were, you know, started in the elite race. So it's more of, of kind of just proving that, you know, I definitely should have been with the, uh, you know, with the top guys, and I think I'll be there next year. Hey, Sam, this is uh, Keith Brantley um, in the studio. With, uh, fantastic race today. Uh, I'm glad I texted you the other day and uh, gave you good wishes. Uh, hopefully that, that helped you a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, fantastic race. Uh, you know, you're, you, you've got a great pedigree. Your mom's an Olympian, world-class runner, former world-class runner, Furia Sultanova. And uh, did, it, she's going to give you a big hug. What, did she give you any special advice before the start? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, she said that, you know, it's in the beginning, don't, don't go crazy. You know, the, uh, the bridge uh, will definitely get to you, you know, and if you uh, go out too hard in the beginning. And then 
uh, that last bridge. Uh, even if you know your body's telling you to you know give up, definitely don't do that. Uh, you know, once you get on top of that bridge, it's all downhill from there. Uh, you know, and then you know you'll be feeling good. So just uh, keep your head up and you know don't give up. Well, Sam, congratulations. You are the 2021 First Coast Cup winner at the Gate River Run. We look forward to seeing more from you next year and uh, throughout the years to come. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. That is Sam Sultanova. Uh, boy, that time, 47.59. That'll get your attention. Yeah, ab absolutely. And again, you know, he's a 1,500 meter runner for UNF. You know, you know, just just basically he's broken into the, the big road racing scene and, and, you know, he'll be in the elite field next year. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, like many things over the past year, the Gate River Run looks different today. Fewer runners means less money funneling into our local economy. But the good news is tourism officials tell Jen Reddy it will still have a positive impact on businesses in our area. Jen? Cole, we've been speaking with businesses and tourism officials over the last few weeks, really looking forward to today because, as you mentioned, although there are less runners, people are still coming here, and they say that's a huge benefit for the city moving forward. At the corner of A. Philip Randolph and Bay Street, Intuition Alehouse has a front row seat to the Gate River Run. Typically, it's pretty uh, pretty busy in here. The tap room opens early every race day, bringing in runners and spectators from across the country. What are you expecting this year, even though it is a little bit smaller? I think that people are excited to get back out again. Um, it is an outdoor event, which are always better for us. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm expecting to see kind of the same crowd not as in the numbers, but hopefully in the excitement and everything like that for the event. Visit Jacksonville says the Gate River Run typically brings in roughly 20,000 runners. But this year, the field is limited to 8,000 for the 15K because of the pandemic. Well, I mean, anytime you have a reduction in numbers, you have a reduction in, in economic impact. Um, you're going to see uh, far less people traveling here. But I think the key is there are people traveling here. Visit Jacksonville's Michael Corrigan says despite the smaller field, the race is a good thing for Northeast Florida in two ways. Obviously, the direct financial impact of these tourists um, is a positive thing, but it's really the signal we're sending to uh, not just the Jacksonville community, but to the country that um, Jacksonville is open again. A message welcomed by businesses like Intuition Ale House. Do these events are they hover from the pandemic? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, we're downtown, you know, we're right here. Um, a lot of buildup coming, but not a lot of buildup right now. So anything in the area that can bring some stuff down, uh, we're all about it. A race helping businesses recover one step at a time. And now that the race is starting to wrap up and runners are ready to celebrate, this is really the time that some of these businesses say business is going to pick up for them today. And they are just, again, eager and excited to have people come through their doors to celebrate. Our coverage continues after the break. You see the finish line at the Gate River Run and a number of runners crossing here. You see the green shirt there. That's a 40th year of the Gate River Run shirt. Some wearing past Gate River Run shirts, others wearing race team gear, others with messages, maybe the local team on there. A lot of uh, happy folks to be finishing up 15K here today. Let's get some perspective on the race here from uh, Lena and Mike as well. Uh, Mike Ryan, uh, you were mentioning seeing Emily Sisson come by you earlier and how uh, well she looked uh, in terms of her pace and cadence. Uh, but Lena, uh, some impressive performances turned in here at the 2021 Gate River Run. <laughs> A good morning, Cole. You're exactly right. And Mike, you know, we were just talking about the crowd and the energy and all the impressive performances we've seen so far. What is your take on this year's crowd? Well, it's amazing. Everybody's going to talk about the national champions, Emily Sisson and Clayton Young. Obviously, they won the national championship. But this race is all about the crowds, the local runners. This is such an important race. And I've seen a lot of friends running out here, too. It's just a, a great local race that I think it helps everybody based on the pandemic and what we've been through the last year. To see these smiles and see people out here is really important. You know, how important is it that this race actually happened this year? It's very important. Everybody, as we all know, for the last year, we've been kind of shut in. And I think this is a nice kickoff to 2021 of people getting out and getting healthy and kind of 
revitalize themselves physically and mentally. And I think that's why you see a lot of smiles. And it's not just the runners, it's a lot of people watching the races and everybody associated with the race. So it's a big effort of what people put in to get this race off the ground and to get it started. And to see people out there enjoying it, I think is really special. I think that's why Jacksonville is so lucky to have the river run here. I think that's why you see a lot of happy people today. And you know, as Mike mentioned, this pandemic has taken a mental, physical, and emotional toll on so many Americans. And while many grieve the lives that this virus has taken, there are those that survive to run another day. Tommy Shepard is one of them. ER doctor told me that my lungs were the worst COVID lungs they had seen so far. Tommy Shepard is a father of three, choir director and music teacher at FSCJ. A year ago, the 45-year-old contracted COVID-19 along with 25 members of his church. I drove myself uh, down to the hospital on that night, on a Wednesday night. Uh, I could barely walk from the car into the ER. And by the time I got in there and they admitted me, I was um, put into one room, given oxygen, then taken into a resuscitation room and given um, a heavier dose of oxygen. Shepard was turned away from the ER on March 20th, 2020 because he didn't have a fever. His allergy symptoms turned into pneumonia and just five days later, he returned to the ER, fighting for his life as doctors prepared to put him on a ventilator. I ended up making videos. I, I got my phone out and just started making about a minute to two minute long videos. Of course, first I sent one to uh, Rachel, my wife, and for the kids. Um... The uh, coronavirus got a hold of me pretty strongly. <coughs> Shepard recalling the moment he thought these videos would be the last time talking to his family and friends. It was a very surreal moment um, to be told that you're going to be put on a ventilator, knowing even at that time about four out of five on the ventilator didn't survive. So knowing those numbers and the looks that were coming at me from all the personnel coming in, um, I was scared. He spent one day in ICU and six more days in the hospital recovering before returning home. During his 12 days battling COVID, he lost 30 pounds and continued to have lingering symptoms of the virus for 10 more months, with them finally subsiding this January. Now, a year later, he is determined to complete this year's Gate River Run. I went and Googled River Run and found out the date was on March 20th, which is the date that the first time I went to the ER that they denied admittance uh, for me to get into the hospital. So. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to run this. I need to run on that date. I don't care what kind of shape I'm in. I'm gonna run it, I'm gonna walk it. I'll crawl to the finish line, uh, but I need to do it on that day. And how important is it for you to make it to that finish line? It's important. Um, it's just a symbol um, that, that it's gonna mean a lot um, for me personally. Um, to know I could barely breathe on that day. And I'll probably be barely be able to breathe on, on this 20th too, but it'll be for different reasons. And it will be a good exhaustion. And um, it's a symbol that um, I have come far um, and that we have all come very far from a year ago. And um, we have a lot to be thankful for. Grateful to finish the Gate River Run and cross the finish line he didn't think he would see a year ago. A story of triumph, endurance, and hope. Shepard will cross that finish line along with thousands of other runners today in this race. And hopefully it's a sign that brighter days are to come. Just being out here and watching this happen means that hopefully something will soon start to turn in our favor. So we're wishing all the runners the best of luck as they take on this year's Gate River Run race. Back to you, Cole.
Runners continue to work their way across the finish line near TIAA Bank Field as part of the Gate River Run. The 44th annual and the running of the 15K National Championship. M. Sisson and Clayton Young winning national championships here in Jacksonville today and thousands of others having something to shoot for here at the uh, Gate River Run. Highly anticipated, perhaps the most highly anticipated of Gate River Runs considering everything that has gone on over the last 12 months. Weather certainly was a factor today for these runners. Uh, the wind in particular, we've heard from several of them. But let's look ahead now. Danielle Juliano is in our uh, weather center. And Danielle, uh, how's the rest of the weekend looking? Well, you know, it is windy out there, like you mentioned, for the re runners that are going over the green monster right now. You can even see the tower camera just a little bit shaky out there with how strong those winds are currently. I also want to take a look at temperature, 52 degrees. Look at the winds, north, northeast, and this is at the airport, actually, sitting at 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at our St. Augustine camera. Winds are whipping down in St. John's County there. It's a little windy to be outside for today. 25 miles per hour for your sustained wind speeds, and that's held all morning long in St. Augustine right now. 15 miles per hour at the Jacksonville Airport. 14 miles per hour in Brunswick, Georgia. Current temperatures still staying in the upper 40s across southeast Georgia. Chilly this morning. 48 degrees in Brunswick. 48 in Waycross. 52 in Jacksonville. 56 in St. Augustine. And you may have noticed here that these temperatures have actually gone down just a little bit. Live exact track 4G radar. No rain in the area right now, but some showers still offshore with that area of low pressure, the nor'easter that we're tracking that's going to move off the coast here. It's going to skim the coast up Florida before moving up northeast. But this troughing feature right here north of the low, that's going to be moving on shore as we head through tonight into tomorrow. And that's going to be our rainmaker before the area of low pressure skims up the rest of the east coast. So here locally, what we can expect for our rain showers. We head into 12 p.m. this afternoon. Some showers moving into Flagler and Putnam County, or I should say Flagler and St. John's County at this time. But most of us don't start to see that rainfall, that heavier rainfall, until this evening. This is 10 p.m. tonight. Some of the heaviest of rainfall moving in overnight while you're asleep. You head into Tuesday or Sunday morning at 10 a.m. here. You can see numerous showers and storms spread across southeast Georgia to the coast of northeast Florida. And they keep going until Sunday afternoon as well with breezy, strong winds along our beaches. It is going to be windy out there. They already recorded a 40 mile per hour wind gust at the St. Augustine Pier this morning. Heading into 9 p.m. though on Monday, we start to see things start to clear out and calm down. Now peak wind gusts as we head through the next few hours. You head into this evening here. You can see wind gusts. We already saw 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour in St. Augustine. Long story short, it's going to be windy along our beaches. If you have anything outside that's loose and you need to tie down, please go ahead and do that so it does not blow away. Nor'easter conditions in place again here. Beaches, it's going to be very windy out there. Damaging surf, tidal flooding possible with a high rip current risk. We also have a gale warning, a high surf advisory, a small craft advisory, and a wind advisory in place along our beaches and offshore. So that is something to note. Not very safe out there for boaters and not very safe to be in the water as well. 58 degrees as you head through today. It's going to be chilly throughout the afternoon. Those temperatures may even struggle to reach the mid to upper 50s with the winds and the cloud cover that we're seeing. We may even stay into the mid to low 50s through this afternoon. Tomorrow, those temperatures may struggle to reach the 60s. But then on Monday, we'll start to warm things up into the upper 60s. 80 degrees by Tuesday. Check that out. So we go from the 50s this weekend back to the 80s by midweek with sunny skies. Looks to be nice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. A slight chance for a stray shower or two. But check out those temperatures. We go from 58 today. Some of us staying in the low 50s, Georgia even in the upper 40s to 84 degrees by Friday. Remember, you can always get updates in the New Weather Authority app and on the radio, V101.5. Danielle, thank you. Yeah, as mentioned, there are a number of different things that uh, folks can be shooting for today. Sometimes it's a PR, sometimes it's just finishing. Already over 2,000 runners have crossed the finish line at the Gate River Run today. 8,000 were uh, registered when the day began. Let's check in once again with uh, Jennifer Reddy and Julie Stackhouse, who are down near the start line downtown, guys. Cole, we're starting to see some of those runners make their way back to the start line. A lot of smiles this morning. People seem very happy that they are done this race, especially with the wind and the chill that's in the air this morning. But Julie, I want to talk to you about, you know, for people who weren't able to run today, whether they weren't able to because it was the limited field or they just didn't train in time for it. What 
are the steps that people should be taking if they want to aim for this race next year? Absolutely, Jen. Shoot, I guess I'm in that boat myself this year. Uh, you know, like you said, people are so excited. They're smiling. They're dancing. They're so happy to have a race. Um, it really starts just very simply. Um, sometimes that's just starting with walking and then jogging and then maybe walking and jogging. And, um, you know, I think the important part is that you don't have to do it alone. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of coaches in town. I'm one of them. But you can find a group. First Place Sports has groups meeting up every night of the week. Uh, and so that's just really the best part right now is that we've come off of this year where we've done so much alone. And now you really can find some great running partners and some great groups out there to get started. And something I've really learned a lot about during quarantine is the role that nutrition plays when it comes to reaching your goals and really being able to achieve those goals. How important is nutrition when it comes to also training for races? It's really important. They really do go hand in hand. Um, I, if I had to put a number on it, you know, it's it's like 90% nutrition. It's so important. Um, but like anything, there's so much conflicting information out there. So I think just uh, making sure that your nutrition plan aligns with your goals also. So, um, you know, starting simply and building from there. And post-race, we're starting to see people walking back to their cars. They're, they, they look happy. But what is important for them to do post-race to make sure that the recovery is not painful or anything? Well, I don't want to tell you what post-race nutrition <laughs> um, oftentimes looks like. But uh, these runners right now, you know, I do always joke that you have a 30-minute window to replace your glycogen stores that you've lost. So it's not a license to do whatever you want, but basically getting something good in your body afterwards will help. I always say there's a recovery clock ticking, and it will help boost that recovery clock. All right. Well, keep balance in mind then <laughs> for many people. But, Cole, we're going to send it back to you. Yeah, uh, replacing those glycogen stores often involves uh, a frosty <laughs> beverage or two. Uh, root beer. Root beer. <laughs> that was the one I was thinking of. <laughs> we, we'll have more coverage of the Gate River Run as we continue on. In order to finish, you have to be to the foot of the Hart Bridge. In two and a half hours, that means oh, about 52 more minutes for everybody out there. You've got to be to the foot of that bridge. It's going to be allowed to finish things off. And for many, the goal is just to survive <laughs> the Gate River Run. More coverage straight ahead right here on Channel 4. Welcome back to the 2021 Gate River Run. There's the Green Monster. Separates the contenders from the pretenders, and sometimes separates you from your dignity. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news for Jabal St. Cyr is he didn't have to run 9.3 miles today. The bad news is he's been atop the green monster with those winds buffeting him since about 7 o'clock this morning. Jamal, I'm glad to see you haven't gone over the side yet. And his hair looks perfect. Yeah, hair looks good. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's been a struggle. I, I'll tell you that the wind is definitely coming down. Or it's, it's blowing across. These runners are working their way through this. As they come up the bridge, they are getting hit with a wall of wind on the way up. And then as they get up to the top here, then they start getting hit with the cross gusts. So they really get no break from this wind. But a lot of the runners are pushing through it. You can see on their faces, a lot of them know they're getting closer to the finish line and are really enjoying this last little bit, especially as they start to get to the downhill portion here where it gets a little bit easier as you can see when they're coming up you can really see the hurt on some of the runners faces as they try and work through this wall of wind because the wind gusts have been strong up here all morning if you've been watching the coverage and listening to some of the runners that finished they've told you just how tough grinding through this wind on this bridge has been for me just standing up here it's been tough to cry and stay in one place. Some of the gusts have been extremely strong. You can see some of the runners getting blown back and forth on the bridge as they go through the gusts. Some runners having to turn around and walk using hats to block their faces. I've seen a number of hats go down the bridge and over the side. A lot of runners losing hats and headbands up here. Just the wind gusts are just so strong. I was here for last year's river run up at the top of the Hearts Bridge, and this year's winds are a lot stronger than last year's were. The, it's very windy. As the runners try and work their way through this, you can see the looks on a lot of the faces as they, they work through here. We've got one runner coming up. 
right, I think we've lost Jamal there. The, the wind must have blown the audio away. Uh, there you go. Look at that. Fireman wearing Running a... with the gear on. That's oh, all man. we see that every year. And who hats off to the athletes who can do that. That is an awfully impressive performance there. Uh, Jamal is the best suited to be up there. He was a fullback in college. He's got that low center of gravity. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what you need. Those uh, tall, thin uh, runners going to the top. We saw some of them really struggling against that win, even among the elite field as well. More coverage when we come back. We're going to talk about streakers and hats straight ahead as our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run continues here on Channel 4 and on News4Jacks.com. Finish line of the Gate River Run has now seen over 3,200 finishers, over 3,300 now, and uh, hundreds coming down the Hart Bridge to finish up their 15K today. And the uh, recovery begins. Let's head back out to the course and check in with Lena and Mike one more time in San Marco as uh, looks like it's pretty thin behind you. Everybody should have passed you guys in San Marco by now. Yeah, we do have a few more people lingering behind, Cole, but definitely we have seen that crowd decrease significantly in size since we've been out here all morning long. So, you know, Mike, we've been watching this race. What are your final overall thoughts about the race and the performances that we saw today? Well, I was very impressed. This is a great race. I think the performances were off the charts, especially these conditions, and we saw great runners. But I think the key thing here is the people that weren't running for the trophies, weren't, weren't running for the medals and the money, so to speak, they're out here and in, in being active and being healthy. I think this is a great, almost a, uh, a fitness vaccine, if you will, for the city of Jacksonville. People getting back, kickstarting the health and the wellness, and, uh, and this is a great way to do it. I, I thought the performances were amazing. And you know, as a physical therapist, what are your suggestions to runners on how to recover after today's race? Well, Lena, that's a great question because a lot of runners work really hard, almost 8,000 runners today. And, and if the first thing I would say for the runners is believe it or not, tomorrow to get out there and run. Even if it's a mile, doing some side shuffles, but kind of do what made you sore. So the running, I think, is really important. Just a little easy run, get out and have some fun with it. That's going to make them feel a lot better come Monday morning. The other thing I would say is get on the rollers. I'm a big fan of rolling, so rolling out those sore muscles, stretching those muscles. And I think, like Julie talked about, the nutritional part of eat healthy tomorrow as well and and that's going to help them kickstart get back into next week so they're not too sore coming out of the race because the people the, the people that haven't done this race a lot don't realize is that downhill run coming off the heart bridge is really difficult on the quad so your legs are going to take a beating coming down the hill your quad is going to need a little love tonight and a little love tomorrow to uh, feel better going back to work on monday yeah they don't call it the green monster for nothing mike exactly. thank you all for all your insight all morning long and so now i want to turn it over to leroy ricks now you've been a spectator out here you were out here once i got out here what are your overall thoughts for the, this year's race well for me i'm very envious i love to, i would love to be out there participate myself but I make it my business to go out and cheer the runners on because I, I get to get up three a lot of seeing people do that. And it's just a great event for me. I, I'm sometime at the Donald Higgins breast cancer run just to cheer the runners on. And I get just as big a thrill for that as running myself. And you know, what are your words to all the runners that came out here today to compete? Well, I'm very proud of them. Like I say, I'm jealous of them, but uh, I'm, I, Cheer them on and clap them on for putting in the effort and, you know, and doing a good job. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Leroy. We definitely saw all the effort, the excitement, the energy, and we are so fortunate that this race was able to happen even during a pandemic. So back to you, Cole. Lena, thank you so much. Well, there are a lot of folks who make this a very important part of their year. Some of them coming across the line right now. We'll talk about some streakers and the top 10%. That's straight ahead as our coverage of the Gate River Run continues right here on Channel 4. Some of the thousands of runners crossing the finish line at the 2021 Gate River Run. Our coverage continues here on Channel 4. Now, I want to talk about two different sets of runners here, Keith. One, uh, it, we talked about a little bit earlier, and that is the streakers. Coming into today, there were 29 runners who would run every single Gate River run. 
Uh, there were some of them that were given the opportunity, uh, they all were given the opportunity to run virtually this year if they didn't want to run in the full group. We don't know exactly how many of those 29 uh, did run. And at least 26 of them uh, did register for the Gate River Run this year. I mean, this is an accomplishment. You talk about running the same race 44 years in a row. Wow. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm happy if I can put 44 days in it, you know, and I think it's it, it's just, it shows how committed they are to the community and to the event. Yeah, no doubt about it. I ran into one of the streakers last night at dinner. Um, I'm not saying that he's been doing a lot of training, but he certainly had a chance to burn off the calories today uh, running in the Gate River. And the other we want to mention is the top 10% of finishers. So about the top 800 runners get a top 10% hat. You'll see that around town especially here this next week. There's a pink one and a blue one if you want to take your pick. But that's a real accomplishment for local runners. A absolutely. And again, you know, this may be the only race they run all year long. And to, sh you know, show their friends and neighbors that they, they've finished in the top 10% of a huge race like this, it's a, it's a great thing. You know, yeah, you it's a great thing. Talk to those local runners. Are you going for a hat? Yep, I'm going for a hat. <laughs> of course, I'm going for a hat. Fewer to be made this year, of course, 10% of 8,000, a lot less than 10% of say 16,000 that you have some years running this race. So uh, tougher to get that hat uh, so far this year. But let's review what we've seen today. We've seen two national champions crowned. M. Sisson on the left, Clayton Young on the right winning, and Sisson in impressive fashion. Really impressive. Again, brave, brave race for somebody who's never run a 15K before. And yes, she's, you know, she's run just about every other distance around that, but just, just really brave to go out and put the gauntlet down. We have also crowned our first Coast Cup winner. That is Sem Sultanova. And uh, you'll see the video here on the left. He'll be coming down the stretch. And we think, we're not positive, we think Amelia Williams was the winner of the Women's First Coast Cup. We're still waiting for confirmation on that. But these local runners, we love to highlight and spotlight the uh, top local runners as part of this as well. Because, Keith, in addition to it being a national championship, it is also a very important local athletic and cultural event in Jackson. Well, think about it. It's, it's the largest participation event in the state of Florida in terms of running event. And uh, it's, it's just a, a very well put on event. It's got a great, great course. I could do without the heart bridge, but <laughs> you know it's you know it's a fantastic and it's, it's got a, it's such a great history among all the elite members as well. All right, for those who are watching our coverage and thinking, you know, I'm going to make that a target for next year. Keith, you coach some runners as well. You were an Olympian. What do you suggest people do here in the next month? to just sort of start going from the couch to a 15K? Well, you know, if you've never run before, the first thing is go to your physician, get a full wellness checkup, make sure that you're, everything, all the plumbing, everything's working well, right? And secondly is then start, get into a program, whether you go online or you go to one of the local running stores, uh, you know, uh, work with uh, one of the clubs, either PRS or First Place Sports, get into a plan, get into a routine, because misery loves company, and <laughs> running can be miserable sometimes. Yeah, shared misery goes a long way when you're running, there's no doubt about it. Well, Keith, another great year of the Gate River Run, different than we've seen in the past, but it still had plenty of meaning for a lot of the runners, probably all the runners coming across the finish line. So thank you once again for joining us. We look forward to the 45th running next year. Absolutely. And thanks to you for watching our coverage of the 2021 Gate River Run, the National Championship 15K. We've crowned the champions. We've crowned the first Coast Cup winners. And we salute all of you who have run and who are finishing right now. If you're watching us on delay, congratulations. And we look forward to next year seeing the first Coast Cup and the Gate River Run awarded here in Jacksonville and on Channel 4.